um, jumping right into the uh, um, second daf of Arvid Psachim, uh, the chapter, the parak that deals with the Seder. And we began yesterday with the conversation of uh, beginning a meal in the afternoon of the, uh, before the Seder, whether one's allowed to do that or they have to wait to the evening. And, um, and the reason why one would begin a meal is not that they're beginning their Seder then, as the Mishnah said, that, that the Seder has to begin in Mishetachshach when it becomes dark, but rather they're doing this to have an afternoon a snack, a lunch, uh, a, a late lunch, uh, et cetera. So you're not allowed to sit down to a uh, bread meal. You can't eat bread anyhow, but a matzah meal, you can't, uh, matzah, you can't eat anyhow. So we talked about uh, that. And, and, and the Gemara asked the question that uh, it seems that this is, a, uh, uh, this is a problematic Mishnah because we already have this rule every Shabbos and every Yantav. As it said, and we learned in Ebrisa, that from the ninth, uh, end of the ninth hour, the beginning of the 10th hour of the halachic day, um, the, one would not be allowed to begin a meal um, on every hour of Shabbos and every Yantav in order to be able to eat your Shabbos meal uh, with delight, uh, with, with uh, an appetite. So not only Arab Pesach, when, when, uh, when you have to eat the matzah, but even or all year. And so, um, so Rav uh, Papa suggested that there was a distinction between all year and Erev Pesach by a half hour distinction. The Gemara rejected that by, uh, um, um, and, and so it goes back to the teaching of Rav Huna. And Rav Huna says, well, you're right. According to Rabbi Yehuda, who all year round, you're not allowed to eat uh, from the end of the ninth hour, the beginning of the 10th hour, meaning the last three hours of the, hal- of the day. You're not allowed to eat, uh, sit down to a meal. You're not allowed to eat too much be- in order to have an appetite to eat, the, uh, to eat Shabbos meal and to eat your Yantav meal. It would be true that Erev Pesach obviously is the same. The, the, our Mishnah is in concurrence with the opinion of Rabbi Yossi, who says you do not have to um, break, you, you do not have to um, hold back from eating. You're allowed to eat an hour before Shabbos. You can uh, sit down and have a meal. You can uh, uh, sit down and it's not a problem. And so uh, according to Rabbi Yossi, nevertheless, in regards to carbon pesa, uh, in regards to matzah, where matzah, there's an absolute mitzvah that has to be eaten that very night and you can't postpone it. And it has to, uh, and it's a mitzvah in the eating itself. It's not a mitzvah about having a pleasure and, and, and having enjoyment. You must eat matzah. And if you're going to be stuffed, then you won't fulfill the mitzvah because it's not, it won't be considered eating. And even if you're not going to be stuffed, but if you're not going to have an appetite, that's not the nice way to do the mitzvah. The, 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 the best way to do a mitzvah, the, the nicest way to enhance a mitzvah is to make sure that you uh, that there's a, an enjoyment and there's a pleasure within the mitzvah and so um, uh, by eating where the mitzvah is eating the pleasure uh, 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 it's an act of 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 uh, te oven, um, to have that with uh, with pleasure is indeed um, a, 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 an enhancement of the mitzvah so according to Rabbi Yossi we're all year round he says there is no prohibition of eating in the afternoon before Pesach, before Shabbos and Yantif, Erev Pesach, the last three hours of the day, one may not eat. And that's the explanation of Rav Huna. Now we're on Kuf Ahmed Aleph, 100A, uh, four lines from the, uh, five lines from the top. Ula Rav Huna minicha. So you, according to Rav Huna, is it okay? Do, 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 do we now understand um, so it's true you explain the brysa that says that uh, all year round you're not allowed to eat. That's Rabbi Yehuda. And our Mishnah is, uh, um, uh, 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 that says you can't eat from the 10th hour on at the end of the ninth hour, um, close to the Mincha time. That's the opinion of Rabbi Yehuda. Well, Rav Huna minicha, but is that is sufficient? There is either... Rabbi Yirmiya said in the name of Rabbi Yochanan, or Rabbi Abo uh, said in the name of Rabbi Yosef Rabbi Chanina, Alachik Rabbi Yehuda be'erev Pesach, and Alachik Rabbi Yosef be'erev uh, be'erev Shabbos. Uh, the Rabbi Yochanan or uh, Rabbi Rabbi Yosef Rabbi Chanina, whoever this quote was from, it said that the Allah is like Rabbi Yehuda erev Pesach. That you're not allowed to begin your meal, a meal, and eat close to Pesach, and the Allah is like Rabbi Yosef on 
Arab Shabbos. And the Allah is like a Riyazi on Fridays that you know, that you, that you may begin to eat, indicating that they this dispute of whether Arab Shabbos and every interview you're allowed to begin a meal within the last three hours of the day, which Rabbi Yossi says you're allowed and Rabbi Huda says you're not allowed, is also a disagreement in regards to Erev Pesach. Because otherwise, why would he say the halach is like Rabbi Huda Erev Pesach? They didn't disagree about Erev Pesach. Everybody agrees that Erev Pesach, you're not allowed to begin a meal. They, that's what Rav Huna just explained, uh, uh, why we have our Mishnah. Our Mishnah specifically says Erev Pesach, because that's the opinion of Rabbi Yossi, who agrees to Rabbi Yehuda, who prohibits it all year round. Rabbi Yossi says, Erev Pesach, I agree to you. And that's where our Mishnah is. But if Rabbi, if Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Yossi disagree in regards to Erev Pesach as well, so then that explanation falls away. Halachika Rabbi Yehuda, from the fact that they say that Halachika Rabbi Yehuda by Erev Pesach in regards to Erev Pesach, Michlal de Pollock, Rabbi Yossi Betarvayim, so that tells us that Rabbi Yossi disagrees even about Erev Pesach. To which the Gemara says, no, that you're misunderstanding. That statement that the Allah is like Rabbi Yossi and, uh, and, and uh, like Rabbi Yehuda of Pesach is refer- in reference to another machlokis besides for the one that we've already seen. And the Gemara now is going to introduce a new idea. Number one, up until now, our Mishnah and the Brisa that we saw deals with beginning a meal um, uh, on Erev Shabbos and Erev Pesach, in order, uh, 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 or do we say that there's a prohibition to begin the meal in order not to come into Shabbos, Yantif, Pesach with an uh, um, uh, already full, rather to enter Shabbos with an appetite for the Shabbos meal and enjoy the pleasure of Shabbos, to enter Yantif and the joy of Yantif with an appetite, uh, uh, to enter Pesach with an appetite so that you, you're going to eat the matzah which is a mitzvah, an obligation, you'll eat it with an appetite and, 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 uh, and do the mitzvah properly. That's all about starting a meal. What happens if you had permission, you did so properly, and, and you started a meal, even though you weren't supposed to, uh, in, sorry, whether you were supposed to or not is going to be a, a machlokas, but let's just take the simple explanation. So I, I, I overspoke there. So, um, uh, bef- within the ninth hour, before the tenth hour, halachic hour of the day, this uh, uh, you sit down to a meal, and you're enjoying the company of your friends, and you're e- th- si- e- eating this meal, and you notice that Shabbos is about to enter, or Yantav is about to enter, or Pesach is about to enter. So uh, you've been sitting through a meal, and 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 the kiddush al is the the, the, the phrase and 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 the holiness of the day has come now it's time to light the candles and you say well oh we're in the middle of a meal we've been eating together and we're in the middle of a meal do we stop the meal or do we continue uh going on that's the machlokas here if you started a meal already rabbi yehuda says you're not supposed to start rabbi Yossi says you're allowed to start but you did start assuming that you started with with uh, 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 with uh, the proper time within the proper time you started a meal and now uh, the now the time for candle lighting has come do you have to stop the meal that you're at meaning you have to clear the table you have to bench you say the after bracha of the meal you uh, uh, you uh, bring in Shabbos Yantif Pesach whatever it is and then restart is that what's necessary or can you just continue going as is. That's the machlokas. So rather, the machlokas over there that we said the Allah is like Rabbi Yossi in regards to every week, and the Allah is like Rabbi Yehuda in regards to Pesach, that's in regards to a machlokas that exists in regards to um, uh, 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 stopping. The Tani we learned. Rabbi Yehuda says, even for Shabbos, you must stop and and uh, you know, regardless of when you started, you have to stop. If Shabbos comes, you must stop, even though you started the meal with with the right to, to you started before the, the, the tenth hour. And now Shabbos has set in, you have to stop eating, bench, um, uh, and, and uh, the, the way they, they used to do it was they would remove their tables. They used to have uh, individual tray tables. And so they would remove the table, meaning indicating that the meal is over, bench, and then restart the meal for Shabbos. 
Rav Yossi says that there was no necessity to do this. Uh, this is an interesting uh, halacha, and it's usually not so relevant. Who would have a meal um, in in the uh, Friday afternoon running into Shabbos? It's not so common. However, it actually uh, 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 was much more prevalent back in um, um, in, in Europe. It was pretty common for people to get married on Friday afternoon and have their wedding meal uh, a Friday night. And the reason was because that's when people, could, that's what people could afford. Then in any case, we're having a, a meal, a large meal at that time, so they can afford to do that. In any case, so, so, so they would sometimes get married Friday afternoon and begin a meal um, in, in the afternoon and, and run into Shabbos. Also, um, uh, Purim, this year when Purim was uh, Friday, so there are those that, uh, that um, uh, say to do a meal in the morning so as to avoid this halacha of, being, of having a meal in the afternoon and entering Shabbos while satiated in full. However, the Beis Yosef, in, uh, uh, the author of the Shulchan Aruch, and the Levush, and many other poskim, and this is a, somewhat of a prevalent minuk, that to have a meal in the afternoon, and since it's Purim, you'd be allowed to start the meal even within the 10th hour, uh, after the 10th hour, or at least if one wants to be strict, to start the meal before the 10th hour, the Purim meal, and run into Shabbos and split the meal. Part of it is going to be a Shabbos meal, um, at the, uh, and Purim meal, and then run into Shabbos. And so uh, the, uh, Rabbi Yehuda says you have to stop the meal, meaning you have to bench and... and um, uh, you, you have to bench and, and, and then go to the Purim meal and, and then go to the Shabbos meal. And Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Yossi says, you do not have to stop. You can continue the meal and run into Shabbos. Now, we know, as we'll see later, uh, either the end of today's daf or the beginning of tomorrow's daf, the concept of Kiddush B'makam Suda, that the Kiddush has to be, whenever one makes Kiddush for Shabbos and Yantif, the opinion, the halachic, uh, um, the halacha is, and this is the opinion of Shmuel uh, later, uh, um, that Kiddush always has to be bimkom suda. It has to be at the place where you're going to have your meal, and in the time of the at the time of the meal. You can't make Kiddush here and then have your meal there, or have Kiddush here and then uh, an hour later make your meal here. Kiddush has to be at the place and time of the meal. So, where's, according to Rabbi Yossi, where's the Kiddush going to be? So Rabbi Yossi is going to say you make Kiddush after the meal, and, um, and, and that would count as at the meal because you, it's the place you just had the meal, and that retroactively would define the meal as your Shabbos meal as well. And for the Seder also, even though the Kiddush has to be the first of the four cups, and uh, the rest of the Seder, so he's going to uh, have his meal um, uh, for, uh, of, of matzah and so on. And the four cups will be done after the meal, starting with Kiddush. And, and then the few things that are needed to, need to be done on each one of the meals, on each one of the cups, will be done after the meal. In any case, so Rabbi Yossi says, you do not have to break. Rabbi Yehuda says, you do have to break, stop the meal, and start the next. So that, Rabbi Yochanan said, the halach is like Rabbi Yossi all year round. Means, meaning when it comes to Shabbos and Yantif, you don't have to break. If you started the meal already, you can continue into Shabbos and Yantiv and then say the Kiddush afterwards. However, Rabbi, Rabbi Yehuda says, you do have to break. And in that, Rabbi Yechonin says, Erev Pesach, for the Seder, there the halacha is like, like Rabbi Yehuda, that you do have to break. In other words, back to our question. In our Mishnah, our Mishnah is in reference to the opinion of Rabbi Yossi. That all year round, he says you're allowed to eat, um, even running up to Shabbos and Yantiv. You're allowed to start a meal um, a, a within the t- last three hours of the day. However, Erev Pesach, you may not. Regardless of Erev Pesach or Erev Shabbos, Rabbi Yossi says, you know, if you did start, you don't have to stop. And on that, Rabbi Yochanan says, Allah is like Rabbi Yehuda, that even though you started a meal, if Erev Pesach, uh, uh, you're going to have to stop the meal and not run into um, not run into uh, um, Yantiv. Not run into Pesach. Well, Maisa, now the Gemara tells a story. Maisa ben Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel, Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Yosi. Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel, Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Yosi, 
were having a meal together. So you masubim ba'akko. They were an akko, an akker, and they were having a, a meal together. Bekidosh aleimayim, and the day was sanctified uh, upon them. Meaning they they were uh, in the meal and it was going on and on, and they were having uh, 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 um, this this meal run in up to the time that it was now time to light candles. It was the the day was sanctified. Amalir b'shem gamliel or b'yosi, so b'shem ben gamliel said to Rabbi Yosi. Berebi, our great teacher, we have our friend Rabbi Yehuda here. Should we stop the meal in accordance with Rabbi Yehuda's opinion to, that we need to stop a meal that runs into Shabbos? Rabbi Yossi was the elder. And so they asked the permission. Amar Loi, so Rabbi Yossi responded to, uh, to, uh, um, uh, to Rabbi Shemming Amlil. All every day, uh, you 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 give preference to my words over Rabbi Yehuda in front of Rabbi Yehuda because Allah, the, we've we, we've learned that Allah is like Rabbi Yossi generally on account of Nimuko Imo. His explanations are clear with him. So so uh, generally, you're you're giving preference to my words in front of Rabbi Yehuda. and now. That you're in front of me, you're giving preference to Rabbi Yehuda over my words. Are you trying to uh, to 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 uh, conquer the the queen with me in the house? This is a phrase that Achashverosh said to Haman when he came into the he came into the house after storming out. When Esther said Haman is trying to destroy me and my family and my and my and my nation, and he stormed out and he came back and found Haman had collapsed on on Esther's uh, on Esther's bed, and so he said, "What are you trying to 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 to, to conquer the queen with me in the household?" Right. So uh, 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 Rabbi Yossi used this term to Rabbi Yehuda and those that that had suggested that this meal that the three of them were having was a Purim Suda running into Shabbos. As I just mentioned before, that that, that uh, there are those that say that that's the preferred way to uh, to have your Purim meal running into Shabbos. And so Rabbi Yossi said, well, we, we don't have to stop. We could go straight in. And uh, and in the, the, the spirit of Purim said to him, this phrase from Esther, um, uh, uh, what, you, you, you're, you're trying to, uh, bring Rav Yehuda, um, uh, Rav Yehuda's opinion, sub- opinion to preference in our meal here with me in the household. In any case, Amar Lay, Rav Shimagam Leel said, I-, I thought that we could stop and it wouldn't be of any significance because no one would notice that we stopped. Uh, they would think we ended the meal and then uh, we were going to bench and then it wouldn't be of any halachic significance. But he said, now that you protested, Im Kain Lenasik, we should not stop. Shemi Yura Tamidim, because if even you, though you protest and, and said, no, let's not stop, uh, we, we do stop. They're going to think that that is a halacha for all generations, that because even though you, Rav Yossi, protested, we, from Shimon and Lee, Rabbi Yehuda, stopped the meal and benched, that would indicate to the students that are here with us that the halacha is like Rabbi Yehuda, and that's not the case. Halacha is like Rabbi Yossi, that you do not have to stop. Amru, and so they said, they didn't uh, leave their until they established that Allah is like Yossi in regards to Shabbos and Yantif. However, as we said, in regards to uh, Pesach, the halacha is that even if you started with enough time, uh, the halacha is that you have to stop the meal in order to begin the Seder. So we have this, this, this concept of uh, 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 not starting a meal where the halacha primarily is like um, Rabbi Yossi, that you do not have to uh, hold back from starting a meal in Shab- uh, on Friday afternoons. However, the halacha in, in, in practice is that unless it's a meal for a mitzvah, we don't start meals from, uh, from three hours into the day. And as I, uh, from the last three hours in, uh, of the day, meaning from the 10th hour halachic um, onward, and even earlier than that, um, there are many that have a custom not to sit down and uh, to a bread meal or proper meal from noon or, or early. However, if you started the meal already, then you don't have to uh, stop like a Yehuda and bench unless it's Erev Pesach. Amar of Yehuda Amar Shmuel. Now the Gemara says that, that 
uh, we had two opinions, the Gemara is going to introduce a third way. Am Rabbi Yehuda Omer Shmuel, Rabbi Yehuda said in the name of Shmuel, Ein halacha like Rabbi Yehuda v'leka Rabbi Yossi. The halacha is not like Rabbi Yehuda in regards to making a break, taking a break. V'leka Rabbi Yossi, not like Rabbi Yossi, that you don't have to take a break. Ella, rather, poras mapa makadish. What you do is, you ta- you spread a cloth over the table, and makadish, you make kiddush. Now, Rash, uh, Rashbam, um, uh, on, on this chapter of Arib Sachim, the Rashi is is uh, uh, unedited or is not uh, Rashi itself, but whatever it is. So the classic um, commentary that we use for for this chapter, for this parak, is Rashi's uh, grandson, Rashbam, Rabbi Shmuel ben Rabbi Meir. And in Rashbam here is of the opinion that Rabbi Yossi, uh, that, that uh, Shmuel, who's from several generations later, was not disagreeing with Rabbi Yossi, but rather was making a compromise within Rabbi Yossi. He says, you know, we don't have to break and make uh, and bench and end the first meal and make another meal like Rabbi Yehuda said. However, we're also not going to do like Rabbi Yossi, who says that you could just make Kiddush after the meal and it'll count. He's got another idea. Let's just stop the meal without benching, cover the the um, uh, table with a tablecloth, which essentially makes it as if the meal is not there because we've covered it. And so what we've swept under the rug doesn't exist. And by doing that, we've now um, put a stop to the previous meal. You then make Kiddush, Poris Mapa, you spread the, the uh, uh, tablecloth, um, and make Kiddush. And by doing that, you've now indicated that you've brought in Shabbos. And when you take the cloth off and the table is set and there's food on the table, that's a new meal, quote unquote, that's just the beginning of a new meal with having made Kiddush. So the Kiddush is, is uh, 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 you've made a meal with Kiddush in, in, um, uh, and the second meal, sort of over the second part of the meal, comes as an honor of Shabbos because you've already sanctified it. You've already made Kiddush. That's the way the Rashbam explains. However, Tosa says, no, in the Yerushalmi, we see that there is a third opinion and Shmuel is not bringing up his own opinion and, and, and sort of a compromise within Rabbi Yossi, or rather he's, he's stating a third opinion, or the majority opinion. And this is the halacha, paris mapa makadish, that you just cover and, and make kiddush. And this is something that we do um, every Friday night. We take our chalas, we put it on the table, and then we cover it in the same spirit as we're about to see. The idea that when they're covered, they're not there, so to speak. And when we make kiddush, we're then bringing, and, and then uncover the chala, we are then bringing the bread um, to the table in honor of the Kiddush, and which, has me, which means the meal comes in honor of Shabbos. So Shmuel, um, ah, so, so Neil asks, uh, what about the motzi, right? Why shouldn't you have to wash and, and say motzi? Uh, so uh, the, the, the idea is that since you've already started a meal beforehand, you have already said hamotzi and, and washed. And the fact that you're breaking now for Kiddush will not interrupt the the uh, uh, the motzi beforehand, even though that technically you 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 um, couldn't eat at this point because you have to make Kiddush. It would not interrupt it, and so you just uh, make Kiddush and continue into uh, into Shabbos. And the previous washing and saying motzi that you did beforehand works. There are those that say that you should nevertheless present two loaves of bread, two chalas, as a lechem mishnah, even though without saying amotzi, because you already said amotzi at the beginning of, the first of this meal that's running into Shabbos. So it's a little complicated, but you essentially, uh, sometime before Shabbos, uh, you you began a meal. You, uh, um, you're in this meal and, it, and, and Shabbos comes, candlelighting time comes. So what you do is you cover the, 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 the meal that you have. You don't have to bench, like Rabbi Yudah said, because uh, uh, Rabbi Yudah said you have to bench, but we don't follow Rabbi Yudah's opinion because you can, you're allowed to continue the meal into Shabbos. You also want to present the rest of the meal as your Shabbos meal, so you cover it as if it's not there, sort of sweeping it under the rug or pulling the rug over the, you know, over the meal, right? So this way, it's not there. Then you say Kiddush, you don't have to be, you don't have to say a either because you've already said a at the beginning of the meal, 
So you're just going to run into Shabbos, but in order to present the second part of the meal as a Shabbos meal, you cover it as if it's not there, say Kiddush, then voila, you open, you pull the, the curtains and, and, and there's a meal and that meal is coming in the honor of Shabbos. So you don't have to bench on the previous part. You don't have to say Amotzi on the new part because you've already said that. And, uh, but you do present two breads for the Lecha Mishnah and you have a, and you have a Shabbos meal. So this is this in-between opinion, which is that you make the Kiddush at the time of Kiddush, and the rest of the meal becomes a Shabbos meal. So the Gemara challenges and says, Aini, it's not so. But um, Shmuel said, Just as we take a break in order to make Kiddush um, uh, and, and the assumption of the Gemara at this point is that that means you have to bench on the previous meal, which because the term mafsikin, taking a break, was a term that Rabbi Yehuda used to bench, to end the meal, and then restart again. And now we go to 100b, kufa medbeis, kach mafsikin la so too you stop for avdala, meaning people were sitting and eating suda shlishis, they were eating shal shudas, the third meal of Shabbos, and matzah Shabbos came, it's time for avdala, so you can either bench and then uh, st- uh, uh, and, and, then, and then make Avdallah, or you can just cover the meal and make Avdallah as it is. Uh, so the Allah is mafsikin, you have to stop, right? My mafsikin, lav lakira shochan. Wouldn't you say that when he used the term that Rabbi Yehuda had used, which was for benching, so to over here you have to bench, you have to remove the table, meaning remove the food and the meal and bench. So he must have learned la mapa. What he means la mafsikin is, not as opposed to just let the meal run on and then say Kiddush or Avdallah after the meal, you stop in the middle, cover, and sort of instead of the, the, the proverbial sweeping it under the rug, you pull the rug over the meal, cover it, it's as if it's not there, then you can make Kiddush or say Avdallah, and then uncover it again, and voila, it's there again. And the Gemara now introduces a similar concept of where we do this idea of covering the, the meal or the food, and it's as if it's not there. The Gemara tells a story. Rabbi, the son of Ravuna, came to the Reish Galusa's house. They brought his table before him. And again, as we mentioned, in, in those days, the, the, they would sit sort of in a circle on beds and, and have everybody got their own um, uh, tray table as, as their, their, their table. So they brought a bread before him. Paras Mapa spread a, a, a cloth over uh, the bread. Oh, uh, so he spread a cloth over the bread, Kiddush, and he said Kiddush that way. Tanya Namahachi. And indeed, we learned like this in a Brisa. The Brisa teaches, Typically, the way to do it is you don't bring uh, the table unless you've already uh, made Kiddush. Because as the Rashbam explains from the Sheiltas of Rav, Rav Achai, uh, one of the uh, the Chachamim of the of Babylon of the Gaonic period, known as Rav Achai Gaon, uh, so it, it, Rav Achai in the Sheiltas says that the reason for this is we want to bring the meal for the honor of Shabbos. Meaning, I could just be having a party. I could just be having a festive meal for some other reason. How do we know that the meal is coming in honor of Shabbos? Well, you say Kiddush. And then immediately following, they bring in a, a, a tray of food as your meal. So that tells us that the meal is coming for Shabbos. So the, 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 the process, the ceremony, tells us that the meal is for Shabbos. So therefore, the Brisa says, Don't bring the table unless you've already uh, uh, made Kiddush. And then when you make Kiddush, and immediately afterwards, they bring the table in, that indicates that the food is coming in on our Shabbos. However, if you did bring it, you spread a cover over the breads, over the meal, and this way, it's as if it's not there. You say Kiddush, and then uncover it. The uncovering is also indicating that it's coming in honor of Shabbos, because again, it's as if the bread's not there, the meal's not there, and then you uncover, and that gives the honor uh, of bringing it for Shabbos. So that's the, the one reason the Sheilta says in or, uh, uh, why we co- don't bring the table, meaning don't bring the food to the table. And once you d- and if you did, you 
you um, uh, you uh, cover it, and that makes believe that that sort of indicates it's not there. And the purpose is to bring the meal in honor of Shabbos. So going back to our conversation, somebody was in the middle of a meal. Rabbi Yossi says you don't have to take a break. Shmuel said the halach is nevertheless what we do is you cover the table. Make believe it's not there, just like we do to our chalas. We cover the chalas, make and believe it's not there. Then you say kiddush, and then you uncover it, and it looks like we're presenting this meal in honor of Shabbos, even though that you've already been in a meal for the last two hours. You've been having this festive meal, but since you covered it, made believe it's not there, then you said kiddush, and then you uncovered it. Now that second part of the meal is coming in honor of Shabbos, and we're proving the concept or showing the concept from this story with uh, 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 Rabbi Baravuna at the Reish Galusa's house, and from the Brisa that says that this is what you do, even though you're not supposed to bring the breads to the table, uh, you should. We we if you did, you're going to cover it and make it. Now you may be thinking, hey, why do why don't we follow this Brisa? Uh, we bring the breads to the table and we have it there and we cover it. Shouldn't we just not bring it until after Kiddush? So we'll talk about that in a moment. First, let's. Uh, finish a daf, and then hopefully we'll get to uh, seeing the other explanations of this price. Tani Chada. So now we have a, a, a one Brisa text that says Shavin. They both agree, and uh, this is Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Yosi. She'ein maschile that you should not begin uh, a, a a meal um, on erev Shab. Uh, uh, well, you shouldn't begin a meal. Uh, close to uh, either Shabbos or Yadav. We're not sure what this is referring to. But Tani Idach, we have a brisa that a, a different brisa that says Shavin Shabbos Chilin. They both agree you may begin a meal. Now Bishlam Mahadatani Shavin Shemas Chilin. So we can explain that what does it mean when it says uh, they both agree not to begin Mishkachas of Erev Pesach. That both agree Erev Pesach you don't begin a meal because as Rav Huna explained, our Mishnah is even in, in in the opinion of Rabbi Yossi. That uh, who generally says you can begin a meal late in the afternoon, even Friday, even Erev Yantif, that's fine. But Erev Pesach, you cannot. So they both agree that you should not begin a meal. It's talking about Erev Pesach. Wait, but this said the other Bryson says that they both agree you may start a meal. Amos, when is that? When is that ha- halacha referring to that you may begin a meal? Ename a bear of Shabbos, I'm a flick plea. Can't be talking about on a regular Friday because Rabbi Yudu says you may not begin a meal from the 10th hour. So when do they agree you may? What this means is prior to the end of the ninth hour. Meaning if, if a day is from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., um, the halachic day is always divided into 12 hours of the halachic day, 12 equal parts. So uh, let's say it's a, it, it's a spring day. The, game, the day begins exactly at 6 and ends exactly at 6. And, and so uh, three hours before the end of the day, at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, you may not begin your meal. But they both agree that 2 o'clock or 2.30, you're allowed to begin a meal. And that's the case that, uh, that, um, uh, that the Bryce is referring to. Going back to the Bryce that said, you don't, you don't bring the table. And if you did... Um, you cover it. So we explain, according to the Rashbam, that the reason we do this is um, uh, in order to bring the meal in the honor of Shabbos and uh, to indicate that this is a Shabbos meal and not just a Friday night uh, festive dinner, um, we say Kiddush, and then the meal is brought in, and that indicates that that it is uh, done in honor of Shabbos. Tosus brings a different interpretation from the Yerushalmi. It says that the reason uh, to cover the breads or not to have it there is because halachically, when you have a grain uh, product of wheat or barley in front of you, and you have a grape product such as wine in front of you, you should really be saying the bracha of of hamotzi or mazonos before the bracha of hagafen. Because in the blessing of the land of Eretz Yisrael, the, the, the seven uh, species, the seven uh, produces of Eretz Yisrael, achita saora, wheat and barley, gefentain and rimon, and then wine, and then uh, uh, the grain. So wheat or barley, generally wheat is what your bread is going to be made of. That comes prior to to uh, the blessing of wine. So you sh- and you're allowed to make kiddush on bread. If somebody doesn't have wine, 
then then you can say kiddush on bread and you would do the same as you normally would do. But instead of uh, instead of saying the motzi after kiddush, you would say the motzi in the middle of kiddush and you'd say vayichulu and. And then you'd go on to Kiddush, uh, uh, the, the rest of Kiddush. Uh, so, so it's possible to do it. So if, you've, if you have the two in front of you, shouldn't you say the bracha on the bread first? And the Yerushalmi's uh, uh, sensitivity uh, training that, that it uses for this is so that the bread not feel ashamed that we're pre- preferring the wine because the halacha is. In general, we do prefer to make Kiddush on wine. And all blessings, a, a shira, a song is always on wine. So at a chuppah and at a bris and 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 and, and, uh, 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 and many, many mitzvahs that we do because of the praise, shira alayayim, and we say praise over uh, with wine, that we prefer to say, a, uh, to use a cup of wine for that. So therefore, don't bring the bread to the table because then you'd have to uh, prefer the wine over the bread, which is not the way you usually do it. And if you did bring the bread, so cover it as if it's not there, meaning indicating that you don't want to eat it right this second, even though you do. And and that's like the bread not seeing it's, it's a shame, which is training us to be sensitive uh, 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 to preferences. In any case, um, the, these are the two meanings of this price of not to bring the bread. And this is what uh, what we do, our custom, is that we cover the bread. The the question Tessa asks is, but why do we first bring the bread and cover it? Doesn't the Brisa say that the pre- preferred way is not to bring the table at all? So Tessa explains, as I was talking about, that in, in Roman times, their tables were, uh, were uh, basically a tray. So you can bring it in and bring it out easily. So they would prepare everybody's uh, um, tray in, uh, in the kitchen, in the side room. You make Kiddush, and then you bring in the tray. That's an easy thing to do but it was all set and ready to go. But for us, you can't bring the tables in. The table has to be there already because our tables are heavy, heavy tables, stationary where they are. So, okay, so then don't set the table. That's a problem too. We can't just bring and begin to set the table and bring the food out to the table um, once Shabbos, uh, once you've made Kiddush, because uh, we learned in the Gemara that um, uh uh, the, there are two angels. The Gemara and Shabbos said that there were two angels that, that uh, accompany someone back home from shul. They, 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 uh, um, they come into Shabbos, they come into their home, and the table is set, and the angels bless the home and say, um, may, it, may this blessing and this, uh, and this pleasure and, and glow of Shabbos be here next week as well. Now, that's, uh, uh, that's not possible if your table isn't set. So the two breads, the challah, must be on the table at the entrance of Shabbos so that the angels bless the home. So you can't not have the bread on the table. So that's why we already have the bread on the table with a challah cover on it. So this way you can make uh, you can make Kiddush and uncover the bread immediately after Kiddush <coughs> to indicate that it comes for Shabbos. <coughs> These two reasons are... are um, uh, um, have a uh, have a, um, a a difference. We had one reason was to show the uh, that the meal is coming for Shabbos. The second reason is in order to indicate that the the um, uh, preference of wine did not embarrass the bread, or really meaning that we're not we shouldn't show a preference out of halacha. <clears throat> the difference between these two reasons is whether uh, uh, that uh, the, according to the first reason that it's to show that the meal is coming in honor of Shabbos. We only have to do that Friday night. Shabbos morning, you wouldn't have to cover your breads because obviously the meal is coming for Shabbos because it's already been Shabbos for, for 12 hours. However, if the reason is not to, not to show preference to the wine in front of the bread, so then uh, you'd have to do it in the morning as well. Uh, Tosa says there's another concept as well, uh, which is, that the, to remember the man, Zechar the man, the uh, man, uh, we eat, why do we have two breads on Shabbos? Most meals that we have, we only have to have one bread, even if we're having a mitzvah meal, such as on Purim or at a bris and so on, you only have to have one bread. Only on Shabbos do you need two breads. Uh, sometimes you come and you see people actually set two breads, and that's out of 
out, out of custom from Shabbos that they, you know, so they were used to two breads. But really, if you have a a a a, a wedding, a bris, a, a Purim meal, whatever mitzvah meal that you have, you only need one bread if it's not a Shabbos. So the reason you have two breads on Shabbos is to remember the miracle of the man where every day a single portion fell. And on Friday, Lechem Mishnah, a, two, a double portion fell because on Shabbos they wouldn't collect the bread, the man. So the, to remember that double portion, we have two breads. The Torah also tells us about the man that it had a layer of, of dew beneath it. And then it was the seeds that looked like um, ice or whatever, and, um, clear with honey on it. And then you had the 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 um, the um, the dew on top of it. So to remember these these uh, the layer beneath and above. So the way we do it, which it, it's it's by default because we can't bring our table in. So the way we do it, at least we have that memory of the dew uh, uh, as well. In any case, the halacha is that this is the way we do it because of the way our tables are set, that we have the two breads on the on the table already when we come back from shul, so the angels bless us at the home, or that's the way we prepare that the table's always set for Shabbos, and that indicates the glory of Shabbos and the beauty and the peace in the home of Shabbos and that blessing that it brings. We cover the bread, uh, the, the two chalas beforehand, and, and we say Kiddush, and immediately after Kiddush, you uncover the bread to show that the meal came for Shabbos, and you no longer have to uh, uh, cover it because you've already done the bracha on, on, on wine, and uh, you, even the reason of, of the man, you've already had them that, and you've sort of collected your man, and this way you have the, the, the bread uncovered for the bracha of Hamotzi. So, uh, just to conclude the previous conversation, we had the Mishnah that says that even Rabbi Yossi, who says that during all year, you're allowed to begin a meal close to Shabbos. On Arab Pesach, you may not. Everybody, uh, 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 even, um, uh, and then there was a, a, a question of if you started the meal, whenever you're allowed to, according to Yehuda, before the th- last three hours of the day, according to Rabbi Yossi, whenever you're allowed to start, you don't have to stop the meal, according to Rabbi Yossi. Rabbi Yehuda says you have to stop. And Shmuel brings this compromise opinion, either as an explanation of uh, uh, Rabbi Yossi, or as a third opinion, that you're Puris Mapa. You make believe the meal's not there by covering it. Like we do Friday night, you make believe the breads are not there by covering it. You say Kiddush and uncover it, and that shows that it's coming for the honor of Shabbos, and then you continue. The, we'll begin the next conversation, the next uh, the sugya in the Gemara, dealing with Kiddush B'makam Suda. And I'll introduce that concept as we touched on it before. That the, the Kiddush uh, on Shabbos it comes from the Mitzvah of the The Torah says in the Ten Commandments in the Aseros Adibros, Zohar es Yom HaShabbos HaKachar. Make remembrance of Shabbos in order to sanctify it. So, Zachreihu, you have to make mention at Shabbos in order to sanctify it. The simple way to do that would be to say, it's the holy day of Shabbos, and that would be sufficient. A pronouncement that it's Shabbos. However, the Chachamim enacted that we make that pronouncement over a cup of wine, as we talked about the, the, the Shira Alayayin, the song on wine, that whatever we have special occasions, we do it over a glass of wine. So Kiddush also, this Zachreihu Alayayin, the sanctification of Shabbos and the mention of that uh, of that sanctification of the Kiddush is done over a cup of wine. That Zachreihu Alayayin that we do over a cup of wine, does that have to be in place of the meal or not? So uh, Rav says that it does not have to be ein kiddush b'makom suda. There is no need to have the kiddush, the sanctification, at the place that you're going to have your Shabbos meal. However, Shmuel says that you do. And this is based on the verse in Yeshayo, the Pasuk in Yeshayo, that says, v'karasa la Shabbos onik. The simple reading is, and you should call Shabbos pleasure, delight. However, the way uh, he's using this, this, this Pasuk to explain it, that the the calling of Shabbos, the pronouncement of Shabbos that the Torah obligates by saying Zachreu, Zachar Yom Shabbos Akatcher, that pronouncement is the Karas Shabbos Onik at the place of the pleasure, at the place of the meal. That's what is needed. 
And so tomorrow we'll begin having this introduction of the machlokas of whether you need Kiddush or Makim Suda to talk about the Kiddush made in Shul. And we shall see that tomorrow. Bezashem Yisbarach.